Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our special story time session. Today, we will be reading a very special book, My Garden is a Square, a book that was created through the partnership of two globally renowned education influencers, Mark Hansen from Australia and Barbara Schindelhaber from Germany. And um, I'm, just, I'm so sorry, I'm just admitting people um everyone in so today is my 432nd day of reading stories live i read every day at 7 5 p.m sydney melbourne time um, education influence is a platform that facilitates collaboration between educators worldwide and we will be today we will be embarking on a journey to numberland with mark and barbara where Mark will share his personal story and insights on the significance of mathematics, emphasizing the positive beliefs outlined in his first children's book, Math for All, which we read a couple of months ago. And he will also offer advice for parents on how to support their children's uh, mathematical development. And Barbara will delve into the history of Numberland and the research that supports its effectiveness um, we will have a variety of techniques and resources available during our journey. And the session uh, will be recorded and will be available on Education Influences YouTube channel. Um, in addition, it is also being live streamed on Facebook. So without further ado, let me just share my screen and we can commence our story time. Can you all see my screen? Okay, thank you, thank you. That's a thumbs up from Barbara, that's okay. Hi, Ferly, how are you? Ferly is tuning in all the way from Indonesia. Hi, Lynn, please let me let us know where you're tuning in from. Thank you so much, guys. And yes, Nina is tuning in from all the way from the United Kingdom. Good morning, Nina. Okay, let's do this, guys. My garden is a square. A Journey Through the Home of Numbers and Shape by Barbara Schindelhauer and Mark Hansen. Let's do this. Ready? Welcome, dear friend. Please take my hand as we visit Numberland. And what will you notice? What will you wonder about each special number. I cannot wait to meet all the numbers. Okay, let's do this. Nice to meet you. I'm round number zero. Don't forget me. I'm a superhero. Some of the time I represent nothing, but at other times I can really be something. Oh, he's a cutie. What have you noticed? What do you wonder about the special number? I think I noticed that his house doesn't have any windows and he has a very sweet smile. <laughs> I live next door. I'm happy number one. I'm one of a kind and know how to have fun. I live in a house with one window dot, only one dot. Well, that's not a lot. <laughs> She's very sassy. I noticed that she has one flower and her garden is a circle. She has a football and there's a sun. Exciting. I live next door. I'm lovely number two. I'm one and one more and we know that's true. I live in a house with two window dots. That's more than just one, but still not a lot. Oh, look at her hat. It's so cute. It's very, very cute. And I do notice that she has a flower. There are two birds. Oh, she is pretty, isn't she? <laughs> I live next door. I'm just an number three. I'm one more than two and I run with glee. My beautiful garden has three straight sides. A house with three dots is where I reside. It's very jolly and look at her hat. It has three pointers. She 
is number three. She is number three indeed. I know. <laughs> Two feathers. I know. Well, she has three bells. It looks like bells. I live next door. I'm lovely number four. To see me, knock four times at my door. I wear four beautiful braids in my hair. And look at my garden. That is a square. Oh, she's so pretty with her braids and everything. And she has faux bows. Oh, look at her faux braids. It is very, very pretty. I'll live next door on Big Buttons 5. Oh, let's go chasing clouds. I feel five alive. The shape of my garden is a pentagon. A house with five dots is where I belong. Oh, look at this cute little coat. It has five buttons. And it has, it has five flowers. And its garden is a pentagon. It's very something. It's very cool. I'm living next door. I'm saucy number six. The feathers on my head make a fancy mix. Can you see that my house has a Second floor. There are five window dots and then one more. He has two story houses and well, six dots. And look at his feathers. So fancy. It's so fancy. I'll leave next door. I'm charming number seven. The scent of my roses sends you to the next level. My home has five dots on the first floor. Then upstairs, you're right, there's two more. Oh, he's very fancy and very romantic. Look at his heart-shaped coat. It has seven hearts. And look at his flowers. Is that seven yellow roses? It is so cool. I live next door. I'm gentle number eight. My luscious garden is optic and shaped. I'm happily, I happily water red flowers each day. You draw me, you go around like a raceway. That's right. Look at her freckles. That's so cute. I live next door. I'm playful number nine. I've got nine big feet, but I'm really quite kind. I'm the last number with only one visit. And I love it when friends come to visit. Oh, he is a party guy. <laughs> Look at our flyers. And he has two stars too. And the nine windows and nine flowers. Look at those shiny feet. <laughs> It's getting really, really interesting, guys. They are all beautiful. I live next door. I'm now door number 10. I love maths. I'll say it time and again. My backpack has 10 pockets. Just take a look. And now we are hiking to the end of our book. Oh, he is very, very smart. Sassy. And look at our pockets. Very beautiful. That's very beautiful. But there is anything after 10. Or this really could be the end? I hope not. Ha ha! I'm a trickster of Memberland. I have many tricks close at hand. Messing around. What fun that makes. It would be boring without mistakes. He looks dangerous. He looks dangerous. Can we fix Trickster's blunders? He just took five flowers. Oh no. And also her window, I think. Someone has to stop him. Oh, you little Lily. I'll help you to fix the mistakes you spot and tricks to tricks. I'm a caring friend who can help you through. Together, we'll make Numberland as good as he knew. 
such a cute cute but she looks like a butterfly and she's like a garden angel she has numbers all numbers her wings she's 60 she's like a princess with a crown and everything thank you for visiting this magical place we hope another journey soon awaits you can visit numberland anytime mm. and tell us what else you can find. But we found so many things. We found so many things. We have found so many secrets. And they are all amazing. They are all amazing. And well, now we're going to visit Numberland with Mark and Barbara. Stage is yours, Mark and Barbara. Wow, thank you, Anusha. Um, your level of passion and um, experience and dedication to um, education is inspiring. Um, and as you said just before, 432 nights in a row reading, I can't um, thank you enough. And I can't believe that you've managed to achieve that. So massive congratulations to you, Anusha, and for everything that you do. Um, we appreciate that. Um, so my name's Mark. Um, thank you for everyone who's joining us here today and also to those people who watch this on a later clip. Um, thank you again to Education Influence and to Gavin McCormack and everyone involved in the organisation. It was through that organisation that I met Barbara, um, but going back from that a little bit, um, as I said, my name's Mark. I'm a deputy principal and a former master teacher of mathematics. Mathematics is the passion or one of the passions of mine. Um, I love teaching maths. It's fantastic and also trying to help students have that disposition and that mindset towards positive mathematics um, and ensuring that our schools are set up for that is one of my passions. And I guess I've been helping education influence in um, sharing some of that resource, those resources. And a couple of years ago, I had a basically just woke up one morning with an idea for a book um, about trying to rectify some of the misconceptions kids have about mathematics. And that was a book called uh, maths for all. It's this one here. You see that? Um, and so that was published a couple of years ago through an organization called TBR Books and a fantastic gentleman by the name of Fabrice Germont, who is basically the godfather of bilingualism, a multilingualism. And he, um, he was very receptive to the idea of it. He's had that book published through his not-for-profit in multiple languages. Um, and Barbara, Barbara might be able to tell you how, but somehow she became aware of that book. I believe it was through Education Influence um, that on LinkedIn we'd connected um, and she'd obviously seen a post or something. And then, um, yeah, for some reason she decided to buy the book, which is unbelievable. And then she liked the book. And um, Barbara can, will give you more information shortly about Numberland and her journey with that. But I believe that she um, just had this idea of maybe creating a book to introduce the Numberland concepts and these uh, characters, these numbers. And for them all, they all have different personalities, different traits, different interests and things like that to help students learn um, basic numbers. And so basically, we just became, um, you know, started conversing about that. It was only, you know, it would be less than 12 months ago. It would have been maybe March um, last year, 2022. Um, went backwards and forwards a little bit and I sort of be honest I thought initially I don't know if I'll be able to help or how will this work um, I've never met Barbara but as soon as I had my first video conference with her I just thought wow this lady's you know first of all a really lovely lady um, but also really passionate and we shared a lot of the same philosophies around mathematics um, so I guess that's what I want to talk a little bit about before passing to Barbara um, and that is that, you know, a lot of us say things like, oh, I'm not good at maths or, you know, when I was at school, I wasn't good at maths either. Um, and I guess one of my um, passions is trying to help people rectify those misconceptions. Um, that's the idea of that other book, Math for All, which I'll just read from my little um, blurbs here. You know, there's myths like girls aren't good at maths. Um, and again, that's a myth. Um, that's not true. There's no research that indicates that. Um, you know, there's myths about, oh, just memorize the facts and then you'll be okay with, with maths. Well, no, maths is a lot more than just facts. Um, lots of people think maths is just about numbers or it's about speed. And again, those are myths as well. So that book does a good job rectifying some of those. Um, for us as parents, sometimes we say things to our kids like, oh, it's okay, you know, 
you've got mummy's brain. You know, I wasn't good at maths at school either. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of research that says that that's really detrimental to kids um, and their learning and basically, you know, squashes their um, knowledge of mathematics and their will to try. And mathematics is a lot more than just numbers. It's a lot more than just fluency. It's a lot more than just, um, you know, getting facts and retaining them. It's basically about the way that we think. Um, so even Einstein said something along the lines of, you know, I'm no more smarter than anyone else. I'm just more curious. Um, and I think curiosity is a big part of mathematics. And Barbara may speak about that, um, about the fact that we want the kids to be engaged and curious about the world around them. And that's what I'm one of my passions as well, um, making sure that kids enjoy mathematics. The fact is, it's, you know, it's almost socially okay to say we're not good at maths. You know, if someone says that, we don't blink an eye too much. So we say, oh, neither am I, or oh, won't you? Um, we would never say, oh, I'm not an English person, you know, or I'm not a, you know, I'm not a geography person, or I'm not a history person. We don't tend to say that, but saying oh, I'm not a maths person is kind of a thing, um, which we don't want it to be, um, because maths is not the trigonometry and all that other tricky stuff that we've forgotten about from high school. Mathematics is what brought us here tonight. Um, we're on time. We're here at six o'clock. Um, our battery on our laptop's fully charged. You know, we have got food in our fridge, hopefully. We've managed to purchase that. We've driven to the shop or found a way to get to the shop um, on time when it's open. All of that stuff in the world around us is what mathematics truly is. Um, it's not just about facts and numbers and things like that. So my advice for parents or teachers um, would be just look for maths everywhere. You know, maths is everywhere. And that's the concept of Numberland is that you can look for the maths everywhere. As parents playing board games, just games like Yahtzee, games like Monopoly, um, anything where we're adding and subtracting, moving backwards and forwards. Um, when you're talking with your children about mathematics, it's not about, oh, this is how I do it. You know, let's solve it this way. Um, it's often about, oh, how did you solve it? And just talking about, you know, schools have changed so much since I was at school um, when we were told one method and that was the way you did it. Now it's more about, okay, talking about it. How did you do that? How did you, um, how did you come to the answer? For example, in Australia, in the Australian National Curriculum, there's now four, um, you know, proficiency strands, fluency, understanding, and the other two are problem solving and reasoning. So you can be pretty good at the facts, but if you can't reason, if you can't problem solve, if you can't communicate, um, you're gonna struggle with maths in most curriculums these days. Um, there's even, you know, critical thinking skills. We're talking things like, um, you know, communication, critical literacy, um, you know, thinking about what's the best price and why. There's so much communication in mathematics that I'm passionate about as a parent um, and also about, I guess, as a teacher. Um, for children, if you're watching, a couple of pieces of advice for you, everyone can do maths. Um, everyone can do maths. So put your hand up, have a go, share your thinking and ask questions if you're not sure. You know, so many people are afraid to put their hand up. Most teachers love hands up. You know, even putting your hand up and say, I'm not sure how to do this. That's so beneficial. And then your teacher knows, okay, this child's struggling. I can help you from there. So yeah, so that's basically what I was going to speak about tonight. Just some little tips about maths. Um, I've got a great timetable if you are a teacher, um, a timetable for how I would um, teach mathematics if I was in a classroom right now. Um, things like warm-up activities, number talks, open-ended learning, um, while still problem solving, while still finding a space for fluency and, you know, learning times tables and that is still valuable. But like I said, there's kind of two sides to it. There's the fluency understanding part and then there's the problem solving reasoning. So if you want to be in touch with me, just sing out. Um, I'll put my email address in the comments there or Anusha may share it as a little handout that I've done. But um, any questions, this, this book's not for profit. Um, I don't take any royalties. Um, I'm happy to help anyone with anything mathematical teaching wise. Um, really appreciate um, Anusha and Gavin and Education Influence, all of the people who are joining us here tonight. Please stick around because Barbara in a second is going to talk about Numberland and I presume she's got some materials and resources to show us. Um, you may be able to see my numbers in the background here as well, Barbara. So you can see that one there. <laughs> I'm on a poor quality camera at the moment, sorry, because um, I've got a guest in our, in our um, office at the moment, so I'm in another room. But um, yes, I met Barbara. We went backwards and forwards. And then in October this year, had our new book published, which is, I'll ask you, sorry, My Garden is a Square, which Anusha has just done such a tremendous job reading tonight. Thank you, Anusha. And um, 
yeah, I'll pass over to Barbara because Barbara is, yeah, a wealth of knowledge, incredible. The number one concept, I was sold on it as soon as I saw it. Um, my own kids love it. Um, I encourage you to, you know, purchase the book. Um, if you're having trouble or hardship difficulties, purchasing it, click me an email, I'll try and help you. Um, and then I encourage you further to keep going, looking at the resources that Numberland has. And, um, and yeah, I'll pass over to you, Barbara. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Yay. Good morning from Germany, everyone. Thank you very much, Mark, for handing over. And my Anusha, thank you so much for reading our book. It was so cute. It was uh, so much. In, it's so special hearing you reading our book. And uh, I really so much enjoyed it. And I read through the chat that uh, people already spotted quite a few things. So uh, hello, everyone around the world. Um, it's amazing from all uh, the countries that, uh, from which you are tuning in. I'm really so, I think this is a wonderful start into the new year for me. I mean, 2022 already has been amazing. As Mark pointed out, uh, we met last year only, I had a first chat in May. Yeah, we met through Education Influence, that amazing platform Anusha and Gavin are running. And um, and so we met over this platform, had a first chat in May, then developed the idea of our, my God, is a square picture book. Uh, then Fabrice Jomont from uh, TBR Books in July, he said, yeah, let's go, let's do this book. And in October it was there. And now I'm holding it in my hands. And also in Hindi and even more languages are in preparation. And I just can't believe it. And this is because TBR Books um, and Fabrice, they are um, promote, they are passionate about bilingualism, promoting children as well. And, you know, maths is a language as well. It's the language that we developed to describe our world. So, uh, from, for, and for me, this is also, I'm, I'm particularly happy about this because, you know, Numberland is really, really big in Germany. It, it started in 2004, and I'll speak about this in, this in a second. So it's really kind of a standard approach here in, in preschool settings for children from three to five years of age, may, sometimes even in, in the, uh, during the first weeks of um, primary school, uh, because it's uh, versatile and flexible, as you will see in a minute. Um, so, and, um, but, it, ha it has uh, um, become increasingly international, yes, because it's fairly easy content. But as, uh, until now, until I really, uh, until I met Mark uh, and Anusha and Fabrice, um, I really didn't have the, the, the resources at hand that I wanted to make people, to provide what I, what, what I think is needed to make it really easily and accessible. Um, so let me give you an idea what I'm, talking about. So Anusha, I would like to share my screen with a little presentation that I put together. Obviously today we don't have that much time, so I can only, we can only dip our foot into the, into the idea. But I say, I guess, um, especially because, because you'll see that Anusha has taken you through the book, which is a starter. I think we can do a, a good job here. Um, you know, the, the, um, back in 2000, and this is a little timeline, back in 2004, Dr. Gerhard Friedrich um, published his research, his research study. Um, he's a pedagogue, um, father of four children, so very much into holistic um, um, a development of children, so not academic training of a certain subject, but really looking at the entire child and make sure the entire child develops properly. Um, so he published his research study, um, and what he what he had done was he wanted to uh, to find out whether um, or, or he looked at what is it that young children need to know, need to understand about numbers um, be before they enter formal tuition. Because today, from many many international studies, we know how crucial the early years are. How Crucial it is that we that children have a thorough, correct, and structured understanding of what numbers stand for. 
And um, often we maybe we rush through that too, too quickly, or we uh, approach it in a way that it's not appropriate for, for the children, as Mark said, uh, give children the opportunity to explore their way to find a solution problem, so, uh, to pro solve a problem their way they might, may, want, may want to try. So um, he looked at, okay, what is it that children need to know? on this side. And then on the other side, which is really, really smart, he looked at what does it need to get there? How are the children like? What are they like? How do they, how do they learn? Um, so what, how, what, what does their work look like? It's highly emotional. It's very imaginative. Children want to play. They want to move around. They want to touch things. Things must have a meaning for them. They, so that means what do they already know? What experiences do they have? What do they like? What do they need? And all these thinking, all this thinking, this is familiar with us. Maybe we sometimes we forget or don't um, think we could also apply this to maths. But Get did this. Children love stories. They love music, uh, play, act play, exploring, free, free play, all this kind of stuff. And very important, everything for them is alive. So, <laughs> um, so he combined these findings from neuroscience and development of psychology, the how with the what, with the didactics of maths, and out came Let's Visit Numberland. And I, were, I at that time was um, a stay-at-home mom of two children. You see them here in the picture, as every mom, mom loves to share pictures of their children. There you see Tom, then a rising five, and Tina, who had just turned three. Um, I much enjoyed being with my children, but I also went through all these insecurities of raising a child. So when I read that article, I thought, wow, the results are really amazing. Um, and more, maybe even more, I this is so cute, so natural. I can just see ourselves doing this. The results were, uh, were, uh, were impressing because the app could show that was in only 10 weeks when the children would be visiting the numbers one to 10 after each other, one after another, within only 10 weeks, children would gain one entire year in terms of their mathematical understanding as well as in language capabilities, um, which, which is so important if you think about it, that you need to understand and that you also need to be able to express yourself. Language is the key to communication. Um, so, and also children and, and the socioeconomic background of the children did not matter whatsoever. So a strong indicator that any child can, can, can proceed here, can have a good start into, into the math career. Um, so the results were impressive, but as I said, even more that just beautiful imaginative world I thought I thought and here you see my my self-made uh, numbers I cut them out of wood and uh, crafted a few other resources and off we went and because of what what happened to my children also to me this is why I founded um, the IFVL to to be become um, to to contribute to promote this really really simple uh, and efficient concept as among teachers, basically mainly among teachers in throughout Germany, because my idea is that if I reach the teachers, the teachers have children from all kinds of families. And um, if they have this holistic concept at hand, that really provides an environment in which the good things happen, then this is a valuable and very important contribution to our future. Um, so that was my mission and has been ever since. I partnered with with Gerd Glittrich as my scientific advisor to make sure everything is proper, correct, and um, off we went. So this is in a nutshell, and I, yeah, um, and I can say my children are very good at maths. They are over more than 20 years old now and, uh, and still have very um, happy memories on our trips to Numberland. They have these, you know, these positive, um, Positive, Im positive images of when we when we were playing in Numberland. And my son, um, he, 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 because of Numberland, he started to love drawing um, and he would help his little sister. Um, and Tina, she, at, at the dinner table, she would, uh, she would shout out, he was sitting in a triangle. And if daddy was here, it would be a square. Imagine th little things like that uh, going on. So I, 
realize I still stick with the first slide. So I guess I should move on and give you an, an idea with some pictures. So as I said already, what uh, Numberland has been designed 100% through the eyes of children. So uh, if, um, it has, it's a translation of these abstract of this abstract maths into the imaginative, concrete, tangible world of children. And as I said, the neuroscience and development plant of psychology uh, combined with mathematics. And what you see here, you you um, uh, you see uh, the similarities to the book. I mean, the the, the book is basically yeah. Uh, um, one a door opener a door opener to let to, to let's visit numberland so we the numbers have a home just like us any child can understand that idea because for a child everything is alive the 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 toy, the, the toy puppet the doll everything is is allowed uh, is alive sorry um so why not have giving the numbers a home as well and in this case it's not well, we may start with a book, but in this in this case, it's a tangible home. This one is made out of cardboard. Um, you can also see it, see it like this. This is this is, for example, a resource that I can provide. But you will later see some other examples of how the how you can make these houses um, because it's only the principle that is important. And uh, we decorate these gardens, you know, and lots and lots of things happen while we decorate these gardens. Now let's talk a little bit about the math in um, in Numberland. Where do we come from? I said we we start from the point of the children where they where they where they start their mathematical career, and it's for us it's very important to always remember um, where, where where we start and that it takes a, a look, takes a while. It takes really a while, a long time actually, to build a bridge from our inborn mathematical understanding, which we all have, over to the um, over to the over to the um, formal language of math. The, uh, over to the language of math with its symbols and abstract and for, uh, abstract forms. So. We are we are all born with, um, and we are all born with some subitizing abilities. We share that with mammals. We can also all, all say from from birth, ah, these are, this this is one flower. That are two flowers. That's one more flower than this flowers, um, and 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 up to three we can do this. We don't have a name yet, but we have this in our brain. So this is called subitizing, the ability to grasp a quantity at. At, at, at a time. I think that's quite an interesting, quite interesting to be aware of this. But then mankind developed further and we want, we want to push our prehistorical brain, which is pretty happy with this one, two, three, one more and many concept. We wanted to push our brain and develop this formal language of math. So we have those numbers and we have our numbers. Our, our number system is based on ten. Also, something that we need to grow into, and so and that's on the other side of the bridge. And as I said, it really takes a while to build this bridge. And it's not by sitting at the desk and saying, "Okay, now let's learn about numbers." It's about children learn this through their daily play. And if we provide an environment that that enables um, experiences and play um, and exploration of these facts, then we are doing the right thing. Um, so, if I oh, maybe maybe I, I would like to to um, speak about this uh, one one second more because it's it's just so so important for us to really understand. We come from this one, two, three, many, and then. Uh, that little blue and red dot thing you see in the corner, that's, that's a 10 frame. And this is really what, what, what children will need later on in, 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 in primary school, an inner image of what a number six, for example, looks like, and then be able to calculate six and five that makes one full 10 frame and then one of the next one. This is something that is, that is really important for children and will help them to, um, to uh, calculate properly. Um, but I can only touch this um, shortly. Okay, so uh, going back to the book, 
here we have all our numbers, as you see, it's, um, we, we, we meet all the numbers and they have a house. And on the house, we have, um, we have the window dots and the window dots um, represent the quantity that, that the number stands for a quantity. So here the children can see, aha, it's always one more. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be, uh, have to be organized like that. Uh, a quantity can, anything can, is a quantity, five pebbles, five elephants, five cars, uh, five twigs, everything is five and it's no matter how they are arranged. But um, organizing, structuring those quantities on the houses is one step of making the principle clear for children. And uh, as Mark said, if you play go board games on the dice, we have this familiar uh, picture of, of a quantity, five and four and stuff. Um, then, then we have, so, and, and we don't speak, and then, and then these numbers, it's always one more, and the, and, the, um, and the numbers have the predecessor and the successor, but we speak of neighbors, and which, is, which is very close to the children. It's very easy for them to memorize that. Um, if we look a little bit closer on, uh, on the pictures, Anusha uh, did that while, while she read through the book, but let's, Let's do this again. Um, here I have number four and number six. Uh, first, I would like to, to point out the, the principle of the houses. You see, up to, um, or maybe I, uh, this is better on that, on that slide, sorry. Um, so you see that the houses follow the hands of the children. Uh, numbers are also kind of represented in our uh, quantities, represented in our bodies. We have five fingers on one hand and five more fingers on the next hand. So when we have one to five houses, one to five, and then proceed to number six, we have one hand and then one, one more, and then it's one more and five and seven, uh, two for the seven and so on, which again is a very close, uh, is a very narrow step for children. Okay, so let's, let's take a little closer look at the pictures. By the way, I have to say these pictures, these characters have been drawn by um, best friends of my son, Tom. And uh, it has been such a joy to uh, work with these young uh, design students. Um, they, yeah, it, it, it's just, and you know, see, it's kind of a family um, uh, project, so to speak. Um, so as, as Anusha mentioned, the number four, you know, see our numbers, they are individuals, they are characters, they are alive and they have feelings and they are different as we all are individuals. So number four has these four braids. Um, the number four also ha ha holds a book in her hand. And in total, it's four books. See, so in the, in the, in the picture, we can spot details about the numbers and you can, you can, you can use this as an eye opener and also as a communication starter. And uh, it's like, oh, I see. It's always nice if you say, oh, look, I, I see those four braids. And, how many are, are they in Donna? As Anusha did when, did when she read the book. Um, by the way, those four books, if you think closer, what shape does a book have? It's a rectangle, it has four straight sides. Uh, so this could be a conversation starter to talk about rectangles, right? Now let's look at the garden quickly. There's four flowers, but you will see it's not four, either the flowers have different colors. It's two yellow and two pink colors, uh, flowers. So this is the idea to bring across, aha, uh -huh, see, it's four in total, but we can split a number. And, and this partitioning is ever so important. And because we use it two and two, we build on this one, two, three knowledge that children already have. And the same thing uh, on the other side with our sassy number six and her fancy feathers. Uh, on the head, there we have two blue and two yellow and two pink um, flowers. So you see, um, again, we have the partitioning and you can use this, you can also use this language uh, anytime in do, during your, your daily routine. If you say, okay, so how many plates do we need for dinner? We have four people, so we need two, and here I have three, how many more do we need? See, language like that. And you see those little six, it's six little beetles um, on the bottom of the, of the page. Okay, six beetles. But if you think about it, beetles have how many legs? Aha, six legs, beetles are. So we could look at 
what kind of beetles do we have? Do live in our vicinity? Maybe we find some beetles outside or other insects because beetles are insects. So we can explore on insects. It's all about exploring, you know, and you see what I mean? Opening the eyes and enjoying. Oh, okay, okay. My, my, my little daughter said, oh, we're sitting in a triangle. It's about finding the marks around us and enjoying, enjoy, enjoying these connections. Number 10. Um, in, 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 um, intentionally has these 10 pockets uh, in her backpack, our outdoor number 10, um, because this way we indicate the, the placeholder. Um, you can, it indicates that 10 can put any of the numbers from one to nine into the backpack and thus create the numbers 11, 12, 13, and, and so on. So just a little detail here. I would like to wanted to point out. And again, the trees see two and two and two and two and, and two more. Right. Trickster. Trickster is the most beloved character in Numberland, I can say. Why? Trickster serves the good versus bad thinking of children. If you uh, children love it um, to, to rescue someone, to fight the bad. Um, they love this. Um, so trickster is the one the person who brings across that mistakes happen. What he does is he steals items from, from our Numberland Gardens. And, uh, and, and so, and the children have really lots of fun to, to spot these mistakes and to correct them again. That's, um, th so tricks to brings across, mistakes happen, it's okay if they happen, it's nothing bad. And in the end, everything will be okay again. And if we want, number really can we can call number really to help us get a sort of things out again. So that's a that's a very important thing that children dare making mistakes because this is the way learning works. So now I have um, you know pointed out a few ideas, numberland ideas in the book. Now I would like to flick through a couple of pictures to show, give you an idea or maybe inspire you. Um, how you could use Numberland in your setting or maybe also at home um, and give you an idea of what, how um, people around the world really have been going around Numberland. For example, here you see how uh, you see a garden of number three and another garden of number four. And you see uh, two completely different versions of a house uh, and, and the numbers three and four and uh, especially how the children decorated the gardens. And here again, you see how you, can talk, uh, how you can talk about it, how you can just have a conversation about, oh, what could we, could we bring for number four? Would this really fit into the garden? Why does it fit into the garden? You see, there's, it's only three red laundry pegs. Ah, but see, there's, there's another one. There's also one blue laundry peg, see? Um, and so here the children see, uh, so they, they collect the quantities and um, they look, how many do I have? How many more do I need? And, uh, and decorate the gardens. And the opportunities are endless. What, what do we find at home? See, I found this fork <laughs> for number four's garden and a little fork for number three's garden. So we can also use, we can use anything that we have at hand. It's, uh, and this is, this is the beauty about it. It can also look like this. I'm particularly proud of that school in Lusaka in Zambia who made this, these fabulous Numberland resources and they had so much joy you, um, playing with them. It's really, really wonderful. And you, as you see, you can use anything, use your imagination, maybe also design the, 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 uh, the elements put together with your children because... Um, Crafting, you know, cutting and, and, and painting all these things that, that's good for the fine motor skills, for the eye hand coordination. We need all these things. Here's a little more fancy stuff because um, Gerd Friedrich also offers um, ready made resources. Um, so, here again, you have an example of how this neighborhood full of maths can look like. And again, you see the, the, what, what these gardens are decorated with. It's all from what we have at hand. This picture, in this picture, um, another criterion becomes uh, important rather than just the quantity. Um, if you look at the, the butterfly, for example, 
where, where could this butterfly fly land? In which garden could it land? Well, could be garden number one because it's one butterfly. But a butterfly has two wings, like the two birds in number two, uh, in the story of number two, you see. Um, okay, then it has um, two and two, uh, two, two pink, two, two green, and two violet thingies on the, on the wings. See, right now, me as a German person, I miss the words for these thingies. But you, I, I, I still know what it is, so I can point it out. And you, as the English teacher, you can say, yeah, you're right. These are six, whatever it is in English now. But this is how we can, this is how we can bring in the, the language of a non-English, uh, um, not, not, of a not native speaker. So this is how we can also um, help learning, learning a language. Or the little toy car you see here, it's only one car, but it has four wheels. And how many doors does it have or how many mirrors? So the children will, what I want to say is that the children will look at their toys um, with completely different eyes and look at, and, and, and look for details. And this is also is something that we need for um, to, to spot the details and they will have a discussion and then decide on where to put this car maybe this time. And they could even say, you know, it's, it, it can go into num can go, and go to number eight. Why? Well, four wheels and four doors, that makes eight. So, you know, a little idea. This is, uh, I just quickly take you through the rest here. Um, this is our number lane, which is our way into and out of number land. Again, um, a source of lots and lots of opportunities to play and explore the numbers in different ways and all those important aspects. Then children love being active, so you can relate active games to Numberland or on that on the right side. Uh, feel with your body what a pentagon look uh, feels like. You know, you really feeling the the own body is very important, as even to learn math in the first place. Be creative. Um, with such this is just the, the idea is just to have a little folder where you collect artwork that is. Um, that emerges um, throughout Numberland that uh, is inspired. You know, when you read the book, you can say, uh, um, could, you could have the idea of drawing a picture um, for, of, of number eight, for example, or there you have that lying eight. You know, if you do this, uh, it's good for the, uh, for, for the for, to connect the left and the right side of, of our brain. Um, so artwork in any time, any artwork is or crafting is fantastic for children for their motor skills and uh, muscle and with uh, eye, hand, eye to hand coordination. Here, just a few more examples. There's even a nailed number three, which makes beautiful music. If you uh, move it around, you know, just flick through there to give you a few ideas and some inspiration. Uh, number that as a starting point for general knowledge, we talked about this, you know, how, um, how we can look into insects and explore what insects we have around us. Um, draw them, uh, make active games, songs, stories, whatever, and really, really find the math and enjoy, really enjoy the math everywhere. So that's a, a, that's a really, really quick rush through, rush through Numberland. But um, I, would, I, I want to close with this slide um, to remember us really that to, uh, for a child to to uh, develop properly sound, uh, it's it, it it they need a lot for them in the development, and we cannot sep teach separate academics, especially not in the early years. They learn through play, and they need all these these things that I listed here um, as a little quick reminder. Um, and especially the self esteem and the self efficacy is very very important. And the beautiful thing about Numberland is that we get the field feedback, especially from primary schools, who say that children have visited Numberland, have a better language, have the language, have the, the, the self-esteem, they, uh, they know more, and uh, it really makes, has an impact to even out uh, inequalities when it comes to, 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 to education. And I think this is, it has a, Numberland has a, a mass anyway, has a, a Numberland, uh, has a highly integrating and inclusive effect. If you imagine that the children 
um, do all these things together, play together. Um, and this is um, what I wanted to bring, <laughs> what, uh, what I wanted to bring across. So um, I'm, I'm really, really happy that as a, that now we have this little um, picture book um, available even in, in, in lang various languages such, such as Hindi is already available, Arabic and Chinese are in preparation and more languages are to come, which I think, I think is really a fabulous opportunity to dive into mathematics with the eyes of young children. So I hope in this short presentation, I could bring across um, the basic idea of Numberland. And I will now stop my sharing of the screen. 10 minutes left, I guess. Thank you, That's Barbara. Good timing. Oh, amazing timing. Thank <laughs> and, you so much, Mark. Uh, quite, a, quite a good timing. And Anusha, I, I hand back over to you and see what happens next. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have teachers and parents tuning in from all over the world to hear you and Mark speak, Barbara. And we have Magaga from Kenya writing interesting in how we incorporate beautiful and insightful stories in maths and especially numbers. Every child will definitely love this. Just thinking of how this can be a strategy to dispel the myth that math is technical and is only favoring a section of gender population, a way to narrow the STEM gen gender representation gap in sub-Saharan Africa. So many bubbling thoughts as I continue to watch and listen. Wonderful. And Cherry writes, great to see the new novel and book. Love the squirrel and butterfly for the naughty and helpful characters. Keep up the good work. Have to go another Zoom now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cherry. Thank you, Magaga. Thank you, everyone. And you be able to watch the recording on our Education Influences YouTube channel. You just have to, uh, I'm just popping them um, for you. So, so the youtube.com slash at the rate education influence and I will be emailing you all with recordings very, very soon. And thank you so much, Mark and Barbara. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing presentation. And if you have any other few words, uh, please, if you have any questions from Mark and Barbara, please do unmute yourself. The floor is all yours. Magaga right here. Can you hear me? Hi, Magaga, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, you can see me in dark right here. Okay, my name is Magaga, I'm from Kenya, and um, I just find myself so lucky and uh, a moment well spent listening to the recording and uh, the reading and just the insightful. I'm 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 a science I'm a math and science teacher in Kenya and um, I work with an organization called Beats for Education and also another organization called Hundred. But basically on the ground, what my role is to inspire girls from vulnerable Maasai communities in Kenya to love science. And some of the questions I've been exploring is how to make education more lucrative to girls so that they can see I can prefer it other than being uh, married off or, or rather uh, married off at a young early age or dropping out of school. And part of this aims at finding various ways to make the often considered technical subjects like math and science to be more fun and, and, and enjoyable when teaching. And I think watching this video, hearing Mark talk and Barbara explaining the number book and, and this really gives me, just talk so much with me when I was doing all this and, and listening here. And, and I just can't say thank you enough. And I think I would, after, I, would, I would like, I'd love so much to follow up so many questions and just, uh, you know, ways to explore more and see how this is done. So, um, working with high schoolers from grade um, 9 to 12 but i'm also running advocacy program about arts integration in learning with the primary school students from from grade uh three to grade eight so i work with maybe uh, around seven schools where we always do how we always walk around and see how can we can get arts to make learning more fun to keep these girls in school and so i'm thinking of you know, I'm thinking of ways to just connect and see how this can be 
you know what we can discuss furthermore today so thank you so much guys i always talk too much as you go going to know as you proceed but i beg to say all that out now <laughs> thank you thank you mugawa um you have anything else to share with him him barbara or mark well, Magaga, thank you for your words, and I'm absolutely happy to to follow up and uh, and see how how you could uh, how how Numberland or anything we are doing here could be uh, could support you in your work. Um, but you know the, the beautiful thing about maths is it's a universal language, it's a global language, so it really works everywhere. And also, children are the same everywhere. And me myself, I personally take so much pleasure in using what I have at hand, you know, like maybe this or or whatever, my, <laughs> my cutlery, and then make <laughs> and then make something out of it and 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 be relaxed about it. I mean children, they want they see us using number or using maths, right? They see us, they want to learn this language as well. It's them who want to. It's just us who need to 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 really remember how um how much joy this can be how um how yeah beautiful it is to, and how easy it can be to explore something together rather than a, here i am and i now want to teach you that because my curriculum says year uh, you know <laughs> year two <Beautiful>. do this <laughs> we don't have to we can really we, we can really relax and go down to what what uh, what is inside of all of us so Magara, yeah. i really forward to um, follow up and with with anyone here um, who is here today or watches this video also get together with the team uh, with the team of mark and and education influence education influence i can really recommend as a fantastic network we, we there's teachers from all around the world sharing knowledge inspiring each other and um it's not so that we don't keep it's not separate but we can connect also our uh, our knowledge and expertise, which is which is beautiful, I think. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Barbara. And yes, you may connect with Barbara um, at her email, Barbara at numberland.net. And for the Mark, we can connect um, with his, on his email, Mark Hansen1983 at hotmail.com. I had a couple of quick tips for Magaga, if that's okay, to Anusha, yes, just to really quickly reiterate what Barbara is saying, and you can see this is why we get along so well and have the same philosophy. Um, <laughs> our curriculum here, and I guess a lot of international curriculums, talk about making, um, helping the students to be confident, creative communicators. Um, so if you yeah. run with that sort of idea in your classroom, you can't go too far wrong. Um, so often, as Barbara was saying, you know, we teach and we say, okay, this is how we do it, and I want you to do that. Um, what that does is, you know, it can make kids feel a bit insecure. They don't know how to do it like the teacher is. And it also just has that relationship just so much sort of like, a, I guess, yeah. a power imbalance there between the teacher and the student so much that the student finds it difficult to be creative or confident. Um, as Barbara was saying, my number one tip would be concrete materials, using the things that you have around you so that children can manipulate yeah. and use what they have. Um, doesn't matter yeah. where you are, just whatever you, you can get your hands on wherever we are. Um, and so concrete materials be number one. The second thing, like I said, some way that the students can be creating and, and communicating with each other. Um, so we don't want just the teacher to set the task and then the students do it. Um, and so often I've, I've seen classrooms here that, that do that. Um, we want the students to be um, having a say about what they're learning and also talking to their friends about mathematics um, and really, really enjoying that aspect. And one, off, one option that's really good like that is called an open-ended question. So rather than saying, okay, what's five times five, we could say, what are all the sums that could equal 10? That's a far better question because then kids can play around. They can think, okay, it could be two plus eight. It could be, and then they might realize, oh, actually it could be three and a half plus something else plus 10, or it could be something plus something plus something plus something. So it's just a far better question, what we call an open question um, without that set answer. So yeah. Open-ended questions, concrete materials would be my two big tips and confident creative communicators. Um, but any questions, feel free to flick them my way or Barbara's. We'd be happy to help anyone. Thank you. And thanks, Ian. And I would also just make what end with one quick remark. Um, um, 
always remember that bridge that we come from this one, two, three, many in our brains and then build that bridge. So also throughout your daily routines, um, use maths language. As I said, okay, oh, I want to prepare dinner. So here I have two potatoes. Oh, that's a big potato. This is it's much bigger than the other one. And can can you hold this for a month? Um, so you can use the math language uh, all, the, all the time through the daily routines. Um, and 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 also may ensure that the children make it feel their bodies they 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 feel they are up they are down where where's my head where's my toe all these <laughs> things really really also have an effect later on on learning math and anything else um so really um be or interact with your children <laughs> that's what i that that's what also really important to me because Learning math doesn't just start at somewhere. It's it's a process. It's it's a process in the entire develop, natural development of children. That's important to me. To me, I hope it, I made it a little Thank clear you. enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for your amazing. Anusha, I, Anusha, yes. I only just had one last com, one last um, um, comment to you. Yes. Com um, in terms of um, what I find interesting, all this is how it is incorporated and the reading aspect coming back. Of when I logged in, I found you reading. And um, at Beats for Education, we find the reading culture to be a great tool to make the education um, system lucrative to see because through reading, learners are able to tour to different worlds and develop empathy for different cultures. Now, to widen their thinking just uh, beyond their communities because people may lack inspiration or sources of things to make them know that they're very, very capable, but they get this from the book. When we read about different cultures, we read about different environment, these kids develop empathy and they find the zeal and the courage and the inspiration to continue pressing on. So I just want to say that I'm so much happy to have been a consumer of your work right now and i'm so grateful thank you for your time thank you magaga thank you for sharing your insightful words thank you very much for being part of our story time and a visit to number land and please join educationinfluence.com uh, we will be honored to showcase you as a global education influencer representing kenya um, and please email us or me at education at anusha at educationinfluence.com if you have any problems if you if you have any queries regarding your registration also you may watch the recordings on our youtube channel youtube.com slash education influence and also we have a various teacher training workshop happening every month so you may okay. do the website and you can just it's all free all free okay. they're all um, um shared by teachers all over the world um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Barbara, for making my story time really, really special. And 432nd day is the one to remember. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. And yes, um, I will be saying goodbye to you alongside Mark and Barbara. Um, see you again. And yes, if you want to tune into my story time, I do reread live every day. So it's every day, 7 p.m. Uh, Sydney, Melbourne time for you all. So if you want to tune into my story time, or if you need story times, please, you can just visit the page and um, the videos are there. So 432 videos are there already <laughs> and counting. <laughs> so we will be, uh, we, we will say goodbye. Bye everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye.